our election partners at Decision Desk HQ now forecasting. He has a 59% chance of defeating President Biden in the elections. Let's take a closer look before we talk to Scott Tranter from DDHQ at our big board here right now. We only have six swing states up here in yellow. Usually, previously, we had seven, but North Carolina really looks like it's, it's leaning to the red side. So let's talk about a path to victory for the former president. I think it's obvious it would run through Georgia there with 16 electoral votes, Arizona as well, where he'll be today, and then maybe Nevada. So if we look at that, you saw the numbers changing at the side. It gets Trump to the threshold. 270 needed to win. He'd be at 268 with 10 electoral votes in Wisconsin, 15 in Min Minnesota, um, and, or in Michigan, I should say, and, and 19 in Pennsylvania. The big three would still be on the board. Trump wins one of those three in this scenario. He's above 270. All right, from that point, uh, let's talk to Scott about it. Scott Trainer joins us uh, right now. He's the uh, director of data science at Decision Desk HQ. That's a cool title, director of data science. I like that. Good to see you, my friend. Um, so that's the scenario I think probably that's most likely to get Trump to the threshold. Uh, talk to us about where you're getting these odds. 59% that's gone up here uh, since the conviction, if anything. It was in the mid-50s the other day. Yeah, it went up a few points since the last week. And so we're getting it from a whole different uh, bunch of data points, past historical results, current voter registration, current fundraising numbers, and, and brand new polling. And that's kind of what really moved it over the last week is Donald Trump has had some good national polls um, that have moved the generic ballot more towards the Republican side. So that not only helps Donald Trump's odds in winning the presidency, it helps the Republicans in the Senate and the House. Now, it's June. We've got a long ways to go, and I think that's going to go back and forth. I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about this in October. It could be low 50 percent for Biden by then. This is how close the race is and how, how much there is movement back and forth and how much campaigning to go. So those three that are at the top of the screen, and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll use them again here as we look at it, uh, the big three that we talk about all the time. If, if Trump would need one of three in this scenario, there's some numbers out, some speculation out that what about the Kennedy effect? What if RFK takes away from one of these candidates in one of these states? There's some, some suggestion he might take from Trump. So, Scott, for the sake of argument, I'll say that uh, Pennsylvania... As a result, just say of RFK, leans blue, and so does Wisconsin. That could be a situation that we're at, right? It's not that unrealistic. It would be 268 to 255 and have Michigan and 15 electoral vote, you know, votes on the map here. What about the RFK yeah. effect? I mean, how are you looking at that? Have, do you have any sense of it yet? Yeah, look, if we were having a discussion three months ago, I would say right at that point, RFK wasn't having an effect. But we've had a few polls, and I want to see a few more. But we've had a few polls that show that RFK is taking one or two points away from Donald Trump, specifically in the state of Michigan. So I, I want to stress, that is what the polls look like today. It may change, especially as both campaigns start campaigning against RFK. I mean, he's getting a lot of traction. A lot of people are looking at him, as you've highlighted in polls before. They, he's got a lot. There's a lot of people angry with both parties. Um, but by and large, right now, it looks like um, RFK is taking away from Donald Trump. And as that map you've got up there says, if that's the case, we're looking for a long election week because states like Arizona, um, Nevada would be the ones that decide the presidency. Right. Because the thing is, if Biden say we're to win Michigan, I just put it into the lean blue camp, that puts him above. That puts him exactly, by the way, at 270. That'd be 270. Yeah. I mean, you know, we always talk about these scenarios, whether it be tied and going to the House. This would put Biden ahead uh, by two. But you, you were saying you think it's more likely um, that we put Donald Trump, who's in Arizona today, put that state back on the map. That's 11, you know, votes there. Maybe put Nevada back on the map as well. What about that area of the country and what trends we're seeing there versus last time, maybe? So it's interesting. We're seeing a lot of different shifting, especially among minority uh, uh, voting segments, things African-Americans, Hispanics. Donald Trump is making some inroads there. Now, Joe Biden is going to win the vast majority of African-Americans and the vast majority of Hispanic voters. But if Donald Trump even makes small incremental gains, 5 or 10 percent, that would be enough to tip it in his favor in places like Nevada and Arizona. And as you pointed out on this map, he just needs to, to push a little bit in these states um, to stay competitive um, and, and, and get a path to victory through those states. Let me end on this, Scott. Uh, get away from the map for a moment and put up on the screen your DDHQ polling. We talked about it on the show a bit yesterday. I thought it was very, very interesting about the economy, which has been advantage Trump, no matter what the numbers show. And on D DDHQ's polling, who's living paycheck to paycheck? A lot of people are. In fact, the majority uh, of the country, maybe this is always the case, but 33 percent strongly agreed with that. But you add in the 26 percent who somewhat agreed with that. It's a lot of people, paycheck to paycheck. Are those people for Trump now? 
it look the polling shows that because the the polling shows that they trust trump on the economy more than anything and so living pay to paycheck to paycheck means you're sensitive to the cost of milk you're sensitive to the cost of gas you may not be going on a vacation this year uh, because you're, you're you're pinching pennies and they right now voters trust trump more on the economy than they do joe biden now we got a lot of ways to go, but that's not a good starting place for Joe Biden if he wants to uh, to to be competitive this year, because that's the number one issue. It's not anything else. It is the economy. It is. It always it tops everything, immigration and everything else. Um, Scott, it's always it's good to talk to you. We'll have you on a regular basis here leading up to November. You know these numbers as, as well as anybody does. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.